Justin Talamantes. My name is Felice Pastrano. And I'm Christian Garcia. This is our project on Puckett. So classroom sizes these days are getting bigger and bigger, and because of that, teachers are becoming busier and busier. And it's getting more difficult for them to multitask and monitor their students, especially during testing time. Um, because of distracting technologies these days, like cell phones and computers, students' attention spans are becoming shorter and shorter. And because of that, their test grades are being affected. Um, so what we want to do is create a product that will improve teacher productivity. It will retain students' attention and it will help to discourage cheating uh, among students during examinations. And we're hoping to do this all while creating a fun and interactive classroom environment. So our solution is a uh, Puckett, which is a puck-shaped device that will sit on a student's desk and monitor sound levels during testing time to discourage cheating. Um, it will also have a, uh, a game mode, a custom mode, uh, that can be used during fun activities. Um, we're primarily uh, aiming for grades of K through 12th grade, but it can be used in any classroom. And we want the device to be unobstructed, uh, and we want, we want it to have, uh, be versatile enough to uh, handle different situations. Um, so we came up with a few different uh, design concepts. Um, they range, uh, they range from like a different co uh, constraints like uh, connectivity, uh, how many buttons we would have, how many microphones, um, and these are some of the uh, constraints that we uh, use in our Q matrix. Um, they include uh, EV noise level transmission to monitor sound levels. Uh, the GUI, um, cost effectiveness, uh, user friendliness, and uh, like I said, we we compared different um, design concepts. Uh, we gave each constraint a uh, weight, and um, we came up with these numbers. Um, and ultimately, we found the design that was best fitted that Chris will talk about now. Yeah, so we decided that the best design was actually our first one, um, but we wanted to create a compact swarm system of pucks that we call the slaves in this case. Um, these are gonna be pucks that transmit the signal um, and uh, button presses and uh, audio and, and, and they also receive um, communication so that they get activated or they get switched over to different game modes. Uh, we wanted the pucks to be rechargeable we wanted there to be custom LEDs, buttons, and uh, be able to change the microphone settings depending on the situation. Uh, we also wanted to have, our, our biggest emphasis was the user-friendly GUI. We wanted the teachers to be able to essentially plug and play. We didn't want them to have to read manuals or do any sort of um, integration with the computer. Uh, everything had it working right out of the box. Uh, another big component was that we wanted to do a 3D printing housing for the slaves and the master. Uh, just to have uh, a little bit more cost effectiveness. The requirements, so we do want our software to be able to analyze and detect signals. Uh, that was a big one, and then also be able to communicate with the pucks via the master. The master is gonna be processing all the signals from the pucks and then transmitting it as well to the computer. So the master is gonna be doing a whole lot of work in terms of uh, communication. There's gonna be transmitting, receiving on both ends, um, of the slaves and the computers. And then the slaves are only gonna be transmitting information. They'll also be receiving, but really they'll only be receiving uh, the change of settings. Some of the design constraints, uh, Python and PyQt5, this is, this is the software that we're planning to use for the GUI uh, and the interface. We're not very familiar with that, so we've been doing research and getting more familiar working on independent projects and stuff like that. Um, another constraint was to be able to create a truly custom mode uh, it's easy to imagine what we want as custom, but it's difficult to allow teachers to have a custom build. Um, processing issues uh, in terms of A to D, we're not too familiar with sound processing or audio. We're not too familiar with the serial UART Bluetooth communication, so this is all research we've been doing outside. Um, and then of course, things like interference uh, from outside signals and then quality versus price. 
So our proposed system is gonna have a standalone application, again, built on Python with various modes and various windows. Uh, our emphasis is gonna be on the application. We do want the microcontroller to be uh, plug and play and be able to receive and transmit automatically through that application uh, using UART ports and communication through Bluetooth. And then we wanted the slaves to have be uh, connected using Bluetooth LE modules for their fast response time, their idle uh, power consumption effects, and then uh, to be able to connect things like microphones uh, with buttons and allow that transmission to go over successfully um, using Bluetooth. This is our hardware flow diagram. It's basically visualizing everything we've been talking about with the power switch, the slaves, the masters, and then the computer. And then the software, this is gonna be the, what's going on behind the scenes in terms of the processing the signals and what happens when things are clicked and um, how, how things interact uh, on the back end of the project. This is some of the software that we're using. This is our material list. So it's gonna come out to about $250 for our prototype. That includes two pucks uh, and a main unit. Of course, this doesn't take into account um, broader classroom sizes or also uh, different, uh, different manufacturers that we may be using. This is our task breakdown. We broke our task down into four different phases. Phase one being software and hardware. Phase two being integration. Phase three is fabrication and assembly. And phase four is testing. So we're gonna start out with software and hardware. Um, and the software encompasses the user interface as well as the sound processing. We're looking to hone in on human voices specifically. So that means we're gonna, we wanna filter out uh, background noise such as paper rustling or dogs barking in the background. Hardware is going to be um, dealing with connections to the main unit, connections uh, between the pucks in the main unit, as well as the computer, and um, taking in that data and how the main unit uh, sees that data. Phase two of the integration is merging the hardware and the software portions, so we're making sure that variables line up essentially, um, and we're not getting any compiling errors when we're running the program. Fabrication assembly is gonna be our shortest um, phase and that includes designing the plugs as well as 3D printing them um, and then encompassing encompassing the electrical circuits in the plugs as well as the main unit. Phase 4 is testing. We're going to be preparing to test our final product as well as hopefully test it in the classroom to make sure that um, the product's useful at the end of the day in the education field. So our schedule starts tentatively on January 7th. We know that school starts the 14th, so we're looking to get ahead of the game um, in terms of our research. We're ending tentatively on April 12th. That isn't a hard deadline, of course. We're open to ending before that or a couple days afterwards. Um, but that's kind of just where our deadline sits. So we're starting the hardware and software phase on the 7th of January, like I said in the, on the previous slide. This includes research, um, but we're preparing, re we're starting research as soon as finals end, so we have um, a bigger gap to just make sure that we're getting all of the research that we need. Um, the software and hardware phases do overlap, so we can start um, kind of using that research in the pro on the programming side and making sure um, that we're ahead of the game rather than behind. So then we go into phase two, which is integration. Of course, uh, all of these tasks vary about three to four days. Um, we're kind of just want to make sure that we have extra days to ensure that if we get behind or we get ahead, we can use them. And then it goes through fabrication assembly, which is our shortest, and then testing. Um, and we're we're starting or uh, we're ending April twelfth, which is around in Tech Symposium, of course, like I said, we're hoping to have a final product beforehand so we can make sure um, that we're all set for Tech Symposium. Another project, thank you very much.